Hi everyone, so my name is Jack and this is Abby. We are two of the Small Employment Managers F6 Department in Link. And today we're going to be interviewing Constance de Rene, who is a French ballerina who works for Scottish Ballet. Hello Constance. Hi. Uh, how, are how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm very good. Thanks for coming today and answering some of the questions. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. Okay, so we'll get into that then. So, first things first, why did you decide to move to Scotland? So, I moved to Scotland um, basically because I got, uh, that's where I got my job. Um, I was um, studying at English National Ballet School in London and uh, the ex-director of Scottish Ballet, Ashley Page, came to watch a class and offered me a contract. So. Um, I accepted it as that was the only offer I got uh, and then I moved to Scotland and I'd never been before um, and uh, yeah I loved it straight away. Okay. Um, wow that's really interesting. Um, the second question is was it difficult settling into life in Scotland? It wasn't actually. Uh, I think especially in Glasgow everyone is so welcoming um, that I felt really welcomed and I felt really at home so it wasn't hard at all to settle. Um, I would say the only difference probably was the weather that was a little colder than expected but uh, I, you know I've been here um, 12 years so you can probably it, it, it shows that I've actually really loved it from the beginning. So would you say there were any major differences between France and Scotland? Was it difficult to adapt to any of those or was it not so hard? Um, it was okay. I I was in, I lived in London for a bit uh, in between France and and Scotland. So I guess I adapted already to the sort of um, British way. But I would say there's not that many differences. Um, probably the only yeah I, I would say the biggest thing is maybe the weather. I think France is a slightly big country, so you can get you know you can get the sun if you go to the south. You can get a bit of the snow and the mountain if you go to the Alps and then um, originally I'm from north but then I studied in south as well so I kind of got a bit of you know all the different climates so I think when I got to London and then to Scotland that was a bit more of a shock because I couldn't travel a, a couple of hundred miles and be in the sun um, but I would say maybe the only thing was and it's probably best to, to stick to the British way of and Scottish way of doing things is the lunch times in, in France are taken very seriously and they're very, very long. Uh, and I think in Scotland we're a lot more uh, on the go and working a little harder, I would say. <laughs> um, so do you think that you'll ever move back to France one day? Um, will I move back? I'm not sure right now. I haven't... Um, got any um well I, I don't feel like i want to i'm happy here and i guess that's where my job is um if you know um with bali you know you, you retire from the stage you know quite young in comparison to any other profession working um where well, retirement is around 60 for us you know especially as a woman it might be earlier than 40 so maybe if i've got then an offer for another job um, in France, and maybe I will, but for now, I'm I'm happy basically. Um, have you ever travelled to or lived anywhere else in London? Um, so yeah, London um, was the other place. I moved from France to London when I was um, fifteen um, to go to ballet school, and that was at boarding. So it was just me and my family stayed behind in France, and then when I was seventeen, I moved up here in um, Glasgow. Uh, but we do travel a lot with Scottish Valley especially. Um, we sort of travel all around the world, all around the UK, but also mainly, well, before COVID, mainly America, um, China and Russia. Well, that's um, quite a young age actually to move from home. Um, so that's quite interesting. Yeah. Um, so the next question is, um, would you like to live anywhere else? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I love Spain, <laughs> and that's where me and my fiance spend all our summer. So uh, I'll be happy if you know my next job takes me to Spain. That's no problem. Uh, but that's mainly because of the sun. <laughs> uh, 
I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll go down to London. That's that's the place where I like. Um, but right now, very happy here. Um, so the next question is: Obviously, you've had to learn English. So did you find any difficulties when you were learning English? Um, I guess because I was quite young when I moved from France to London, and well. I wanted to be a ballerina so much that I didn't really focus on the aspect as such as it will be a different language. It sounds stupid to say it, but I was so motivated to go to this ballet school that I was just saying like, it's fine, it'll be fine, I'll just go. And then once I got to London and my parents left, suddenly I realized, oh God, I can't understand anything. Um, and although I learned English at French school, like, you know, academic studies, it's not the same but suddenly you're in the country and everyone speaks English with a, a proper accent when you know when it's a teacher they usually although they have a great accent you're with a French surrounded so it was different and uh, it I have to say I didn't regret my decision but I was a bit shocked for about two weeks and then after about two months I was able to hold conversations and understand what was going on um, but luckily, um, dance is is set in French. The language of of the steps is all in French, so that saved me. Yeah, no, no, definitely. It sounds like um, living in the country has really um, helped to improve your English um, much more than school. Um, so, how long have you spoken English? So uh, I moved to London when I was fifteen, uh, and I've been to Scotland 12 and so it's been 15 years since I um, properly moved to a, a, a British country and um, my fiance is, um, is British as well so I guess that sort of helped me uh, learn about the culture as well because um, quite often you know when you move country you'll always find for instance with me like there was a French person in the school so I would automatically sort of stick with that person and we would speak in French together um, and sometimes if you stay with your own um, you, your own friends that come from the country that you come from you it stops you from learning the language so um, it was good that I didn't really have much of a choice and I just had to just go and be confident and speak uh, and you know I think what helped was watching TV watching um, you know, British programs, American programs, and and trying to really dive into the culture and the past because you don't realize when you move country, you know, you don't know the history, you don't know the economy side of things. So it's another aspect to learn on top of the language. Yeah. Um, so do, have you ever learned any other languages apart from French and English? Uh, at school, I was doing Spanish, um, so I I am very bad at it, but I I can. Um, if a Spanish person speaks to me really slowly and I know what they're talking about, I can sort of follow. But it's something I'd like to uh, properly, maybe later, dive into and, and learn again. Um, they say that the more language you learn, the quicker you learn like more. So hopefully that works. <laughs> so how useful is speaking like um, another language uh, than your own? Um, I mean, it's it's so you know valuable. I think. Uh, it it gives you perspective of different culture and and it's helping you um, think differently as well and you know certain words um, in French the English language doesn't have and vice versa so you can um, yeah it makes you think more and then um, it, it's so uh, handy when you travel because you know uh, especially with English you can sort of go anywhere and someone will speak English so you can sort of uh, find that person and try and find your way around but uh, yeah it's been it it's something that I would I'm happy I've done and I think um, I'd want my children to also learn books French French and English straight away because I think it's super valuable so on to more about your job what is your favorite thing about ballet um, my favorite thing about ballet, I think it would be um, the performance aspect. So, performing in front of an audience, um, being in a theater, and you know it's amazing because we get to play all these different roles. 
Um, so there's a part of acting that I really like as well. Uh, and the traveling, uh, which I'm hoping we get to do again soon. Uh, but yeah, I love traveling and, and, and with my job, it really gets me to different places. So that's brilliant. Um, so what would you say that your most memorable performance is? Um, oh, there's, oh, that's a hard question. Um, I guess on a personal achievement level, it would be um, when I got promoted to principal dancer um, after a performance of um, Swan Lake at the Edinburgh Festival Theatre. Um, but in terms of um, in terms of like the repertoire and the, and the part I've loved the most, it would be again Swan Lake, but also I loved playing Cinderella. Um, and then it's hard to pick one, but then also you know. Um, getting to perform, there was one show we did in New York that was a really good memory and then another one in um, in St. Petersburg at the Marinsky Theatre, that was probably a, a really big highlight. Um, what challenges have you faced throughout your career? Um, well, quite, I mean, I think with every career there will be challenges and I think that's, that, that's good, you know. Um, Probably the the hardest one would be injuries. Um, I sprained my ankle twice when I joined Scottish Ballet, uh, and I also had surgery on my um, big toe because I had um, a bone spur, so it's like an extra bone in between uh, my big toe and second toe. Um, so they're they're really hard challenges because you know sometimes you identify your job is that's what you identify with and when you can't do it and and you know the tool that you do your job with my body failed me it's it's it can be quite um, hard to deal with uh, but it also gives you perspective and and it gives you time to reflect and time to you know um, think about something else and maybe learn something else so um, because I got injured I then went on to studying which was really helpful um, so I guess you know with every challenge there's also a positive aspect that comes out of it um, and also I think this the second one would be um, the fact that I'm, I'm away from home so um, as much as I love my job it's it's difficult to not be able to just um, take your car and drive and see your parents or see your sister or your brothers uh, and especially like my brother has had kids and I you know I can't see them grow up so that's things that you know you have to sacrifice in a, in a way um, but then when you go home it's you know it's great because then you can spend a longer time with them so it is it's different challenges but it, it's it's been worth it Uh, so I started so I'm from um, Amiens, which is in the north of France, between Paris and Lille. Um, so I started ballet there uh, when I was six years old. I then moved to Cannes in the south uh, to a school called Rosala Haitoa um, School, uh, where I then uh, did um, academics in the morning and then ballet in the afternoon. And then at 15 I moved to London to English National Ballet School. Um, and then at 17 I moved up here when I got my um, contract. So yeah, I would say the, the, the three men's schools were my first ever school, then Cannes, then London. So a final question is, did you always want to be a ballerina? Um, not always. Uh, when I was little I wanted to be a vet. <laughs> That's all I wanted. Uh, and then I... I uh, became allergic to pretty much all animals, so obviously that went out the window. Uh, and um, I didn't really, I mean I loved dancing, but I didn't really thought of it as a profession until I was about 12, 11, 12. Um, and then that's when I started to watch, to see shows. My parents, I was lucky enough my parents took me to Paris Opera and then you know I saw an actual performance and then I went oh, oh that's like that's actually what I want to do um, but then you know you sort of keep the academics on the side because you never know what's going to happen um, and then when I turned 15 that's when I tried as much as I could to really go professionally well thank you so much for answering the questions we really appreciate it
that's okay, thank you.